we'll start with the pizza oven. Okay. So these um, two, they're gas fired um, with an electric blower. The on switches are right here. You fire them up. Uh, there's no pilot light to light. Is this technically two ovens? She can have just, let's say she was only doing two pizzas or something for a different day, she could only do one of them? Yep. Okay. You can turn one on at a time or both. Okay. Uh, the conveyor operates automatically. Uh, controls are in here, which there's detailed information on, on how to adjust the controls in the operations manual. Um, but when you start it up, you hit the temperature, you hold it. There you heard the, the gas turn on. You'll see the temperature here warming up. Um, so it goes from, I believe, 150 to 485, somewhere in that range. How fast? How quick does it warm up? Yeah, it's already. So is that that 170? That oven is already at 170? That's what it says. I mean, if you feel this in here, it's already. Oh, it, so it's called an impinger, so it has the heat that. Um, so you set your temperature here. If you hold these two down, it says set point. Click here. Your temperature right now at 475. So you can take it down to say 400. 225. So 250 is the bottom here. So we set that set time. Let's say five minutes. So it'll take it five minutes to go through. Yep, and then um, well it'll 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 maintain that temperature for five minutes. Um, so it's a built-in timer. So right now it's heating up to 250 before we put it out. Um, okay. When you set you set that timer, at, or you, excuse me, you set the, the temperature at 250, and um, does she have to do that every day? Will it go back to some default, or will the 250 continue to be there? I think you have to set it every day. Okay. Thank you. Can you set this down here? Yep.
she's up here to catch him? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I don't think it has the power to, to push the thing off. But, I mean, but if there's one right out. behind it. Right. Oh, hi. You have to tell everyone. Catch the pizza. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The crumb tray here. Oh. Okay. It should be on either side. Is there one on the other side?
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will play with pizza in my case. So the timer is for the bell. And we're going to figure out how long it will take to cook. And that, will not, and, and that bell won't quit in the temperature, yes. It won't quit until we actually turn that green light off. Correct. Russ, um, we make operations and maintenance manuals for the whole kitchen, and uh, they have them. I don't know if they're here, but the book is about that big on everything in here. And those will kind of be your go-to guide for questions. Um, in the very front of it is a service agent listing. So it'll show Lincoln and Pinger oven. It'll show the voltage, the serial number, um, all the things you'll need if you ever have to make a service call. And then I'll show the phone number of the service agent for exactly. most of the stuff it's wrong service. But uh, it's kind of like that that sheet is probably the most valuable thing of all this okay. equipment okay. to yeah. refer to. Yeah, there's there's two copies, so one is probably gonna be on site and one will be maybe okay. at the district office. Mm -hmm. or, um, so so when we call for this first X amount of time, they're on warranty. Yeah. Let's, let's say she gets here and for some reason it won't start or some that. She calls who's in the manual. Okay. Yep, and everything on there will have the information for the okay. service agent. Um, okay. And it, it actually actually says the warranty period on each of those. Okay. Let me try to. Um, so, I'm just going to move on to the four burner range here. So, this has an electronic start to it. We call it a, P, a PZO igniter. So, we have four burners and we have a standard space saver oven. Um, not convection, just radiant heat, and this is gas. So the startup burner, um, they have pilot lights in between each of them. Uh -huh. You turn it to this little, it's like a spark. Yeah. So you turn one of them, I don't need the lighter here, uh, turn one of them to that, right. hold it in, and you'll kind of hear a little gas noise. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. And then it says to hold it for 15 seconds once you've done that. Um, I've done it for about four or five seconds and it holds off. Uh, from there you have your pilot light lit for this one burner. And you can adjust high. Low. So am I set for all of them now? No, or each of them has an individual pilot. So for this one, Again, you turn. you'll light it. Hold it in, light it. Now we have our other pilot lit. Hold it in for up to 15 seconds. And there, we have another burner lit. Um, when you turn it back to this point here, it'll stop, and then all you'll have is a pilot light. Um, when you want to shut the thing down and not have pilot lights, that's why purchasing this electronic ignition at the end of the day, you push it in, turn it all the way to the right, and then you'll see these go out. Okay. So if you want, if you want to try one. Um, yeah. Did you see that light? Anybody see it light? Let's see what should be right in here. Okay, I see a fire there. there oh, yeah, it it's is. lit. And then when you turn it to where it stops, the burner's out, the pilot's on. Uh huh. And then if you push That's in and turn it all the way to the right, the pilot's out. So I can. Just so you feel good. Oops, I didn't need it. There, I forgot to need this. Yeah. See that one sparked more than mine? Turn it. Okay. Okay. So once you've lit them, probably want to leave them during the day, but this, you know, if you're going to, when you're done for whatever, then turn them off. But if, if you're using one, you heat something up, and you may have to come back, right. leave it. Yeah, leave it. The advantage of this is you don't have standing pilot lights. Yeah. Okay. Um, safety feature. The oven has one too. The oven has a pilot light. Um, 
It says it has some instructions down here on how to light it. Um, if you look down in here, there is a port for one of these match lighters. <laughs> I have a walking talk here. The camera work? can see it. That's where you can light it manually. Um, it also says, just like the others, if you turn it to the spark, push it in. Hold this down. That it should light that pilot down there. And it's lit. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. That looks back out. In the event that that's not working for you, it has a manual override, and you can do it with these two. You're lit without using that. So, so in case the uh, electronics malfunction, you can light your range. Um, so down here to light it manually, that little porthole. Again, turn it to the spark. Push it in, okay. light it, you heard the boom. <laughs> and then from there, uh, your oven range is from 250 to 500 degrees, standard oven. Mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't have a light to say when it's preheated, um, but uh, I'll turn that off. Let's see what else. Um, under the burner box, there are these crumb trays. This is something you might want to line with line foil, um, or um, just keep them clean regularly. The interior of the oven, um, pull it out. No. For the most part, is porcelainized. Uh, can be wiped out with soap and water. Oven cleaner. Is that a tray in the bottom? This tray does come out as well. This, yeah, and this is over the, uh, the um, element. oven element, right. which is gas in this case. Yeah. One oven rack. Yeah, you have a couple other ovens over there. Yeah, just a few. Um, the kettle. So this is a pressurized steam kettle, which means inside it, it heats up um, steam to create heat via the gas burner um, to heat the liquid inside. There's a pantry faucet here. When your water's on. And fill it up. Before you start filling, you want to make sure that this is closed, or else you're going to have a mess on the ground. This is what they refer to as a tangent draw off valve. So, um, without tilting, you can really drain out the um, the whole kettle if you just have, you know, extra cleaning. And you don't need to dump the whole thing. Uh, you, I think it says you don't want to keep this thing unless it is has um, at least to this line. Otherwise, you're kind of dry firing the unit. So, you want to have this thing full of liquid before you start heating. You can heat this up if you want it to be light. The, uh, the strainer yeah. in the bottom <laughs> is yeah. so uh, there's enough, no big chunks will go through that to engine draw valve and clog it up. If you are draining it out, uh, it's re it's fully yeah, it's fully removable, and this just slides right on into the uh, the tangent just to hold it in place. Yeah. To start it up, your power's on. This is an electric. Okay. You'll see the light. You'll yeah. see that it's heating. Okay. Adjustable from one to ten, and you'll hear that. Yeah. Yeah, in a couple of minutes it'll start to feel warm. My other one wouldn't uh, For the pressure of the kettle, you'll see here that we're in the green zone. That's where you want to be. If the pressure is higher than that, there's a little ring back here. And below it is a opening. It will be hot, so you don't want to put your hand anywhere near that. You might want to put like a, a bucket under that. But if the pressure is higher than the green zone, you can pull this ring and blow off some pressure. Uh, this has all been tested and calibrated by the service agent. Okay, I gotta see it. Where does the steam come out at them? So don't get burned. It'll come out down there. It'll spray like a little bit. And this is the ring that you pull. Mm -hmm. Is it the spray? So because if this is not in the green zone, it's not gonna have the correct pressure to correct. properly. 
so it's in the green zone right now. It should stay there in the event the price it does get higher. You can blow off some of the pressure right there. Okay. Okay. In the event that nobody's around, is it set so if it gets too high, we'll automatically bleed off anyhow, or we'll only bleed off pressure if you manually do it? Um, I don't think it has an automatic bleed off, but. Yeah, I mean, hey, the only reason I could see it be getting high would be if someone um, dry fired it without without some, something to take away the heat, like the, the water that's going in there right now. So while this water heats up, we can kind of get the steamer rolling. Here we have a gas steamer. On off switch here, timer switch here. Uh, startup instructions and shutdown instructions are right on the front. Here's the handle to open it up. Here's a rubber seal around here. Um, make sure the steam isn't coming out when you're cooking. Um, and then here are pan racks. And so you can, this is, a, I think they refer to it as a five pan steamer. So you can effectively put in five hotel pans that are two and a half inch deep at a time. Um, so the timer. Ten minutes. Start stop. So right now it's paused because the boiler is filling with water. About five minutes. Oh, okay. So start up every morning on all this kind of stuff will take some time. Oh yes, yes. So that will be hot to the touch. Mm -hmm. you know that. So to, for the steamer to kind of fire up and, and whatnot, so let's, say, let's say she fires it up in the morning to do something. Um, will it take the same amount of time if she needs it an hour later to, oh, water to get it? Do I have to turn no, that off? Oh, yeah. that, that will be on. Yeah, the plumber must have the water off. Okay. So now I can do its thing. So it doesn't take all that long for the steam to... It says, it says, uh, the, the initial boiler part takes about five minutes. Oh, okay. So once it once it has or sorry, boiler fill. Once it has that, um, it'll start generating steam. Uh, this is an auto fill, auto drain unit. So there's a pipe back here, so you don't have to add water to it. It does it all on its own. And okay. It drains itself out. Okay. So when you shut the thing down, you'll hear it all dumping out. Dumping it out. Okay. Right over a floor sink, so it takes care of itself. And it takes, is that, is that chemicals for it? Filtration system. So a steamer is one of the most sensitive pieces of cooking equipment because uh, the, the heating elements can scale up with whatever's in the water coming in. So having a filter system um, and a scale inhibitor really helps keep, keep the water perfectly clean so we're not so getting any minerals or stuff. Okay. That's the number one service column of a steamer, which is uh, scaling. Oh, okay. So does that take regular service, or is that something that's going to let us know if the filter is dirty, or how yeah. do we know um, if it needs cleaning or replacing? So in the O&M manual, um, with this, there is a thing about the other filter, how often you need to change it based okay. on. Okay. And, and uh, where we can acquire them. Exactly. And that is something we can do to change, you know, our service people. Yeah, you know. facilities. So you set the timer on this for the cook time, and it won't start until it is full. And mm -hmm. my thing should be in there before the timer goes on, or before it fills. I would wait. Wait until it generates steam. And then put my food in it. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. 
Once it gets off pause mode, uh -huh. then it'll be. Then I just put my food in it. Yeah. And it's a simple timer. Uh, it's an on-off machine. There's no right. high steam, low steam. This, this is filling yeah. out. Yeah, this is your on-off. And here's a timer. Now, what if I want to go with the chain? Where do I oh, go I up here? Just or do so I have to clear it? It's in clear. there. In this and then... One, five, zero, zero. Looks like a microwave. Yeah, <laughs> and then like that. So, and it's still heating up inside of it. Will I get a buzzer when it hits 15? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you'll see it tick down, too. Okay. So, um, when the timer runs out, it'll stop. It'll still be on, but it'll stop. Uh, the element will stop heating. Um, so, if you want to steam something for five minutes, hit start, put it in. It'll stop okay, for five I'm minutes. Getting, it won't steam anymore. I'm not getting to clear. So, what's what are we doing wrong? I think we might be touching it too much. Um, So I have product in there that's cooked. What's the tipper for? The tipper? Um, if you have something that you'd want to dump it all the way out into, uh -huh. um, or like I said, if you wash the whole thing inside, you have it full of mm -hmm. liquid, you can either tip it or you can use the tin and draw it up. So it's either are type or. thing. Okay. But I have that will tip all the way down to that. After we get the water, can we? After the water, I want to see that. Please. But if I so. use this, I have to have a bucket under it to drain. Correct. Because it won't hit the hole. Correct. Um, it, it'll hit. It'll hit the edge of the hole, but it'll. Okay. 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 You'll get a, a chain yeah. with the pipe thing. Oh, yeah. good. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you you guys will all wear it and slip. But I want to see the tip down so we can see well, what you think. Because I'm just saying, I know students think the deal that we keep. So that if that plate tipped over, that's going to be real nice if someone's a plate now. Oh, yeah. You know, just yeah. it's kind of a oh, milk crate no, type I'm, on wheels. No, I'm type. thinking of a little dolly that you go under the car with. Well, not quite that With well. the padding. <laughs> well, the padding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. don't want to. But like, a milk, like our milk thing. Something about that type. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's a car thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Scott and I have had, had words about that. Um, We'll turn this off and it's okay. still so warm, but you can dump it. Okay. 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 Now, does the lid have to be down? Um, no. No. The, the lid is full for the lid. Right. When you're heating products, it's just like a lid on the hand. Right. 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 Uh, so it, it won't tilt down if the lid is on. Okay. It'll get in the way. Okay. You just want to have it up. Here's your crank. Just, I'm sorry. I'm going to get hot water on you. You want to go down slowly. This guy will kind of move, but okay. it should be kind of walking. Through. That guy will what? It'll it'll slide, but it's okay. it's in its thing just in case. No surprise if it's jumping out on you. It don't all at once. So as you can see, the the floor trough is pretty big, but if you did it all at once, it'd be yeah. everywhere. <laughs> oh, I don't sure, want to do yeah. it nice and oh, easy. Always good to have a mop handy too. You can use the other spray. The floor is a anti-skid, but but I like getting being able to get close enough to wipe the sides without burning your arms. You know when it gets hot. I couldn't reach the bottom of the other. Patty could use it yeah. as an armpit. Your arm was too short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is brilliant. This is much better. Yeah. And like I say, I've I've kind of caught myself burning arms on those things, okay. trying to reach to the bottom. I mean, not bad burn. Because they were just, they were already cooling. But it's like, ow. Yeah, that's we, that. we usually fill it back with cold water before we get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got it hard. But. Well, it's a nice enough drain that 
should some particles be there, we can lift the grate up and yeah. pick up the particles, exactly. which is so much better than Two-piece grate. crud going Maybe through. Yeah. Getting flushed, so yeah. No spaghetti. Well, we've never done spaghetti. Well, there was some in high school. That's something else. The drains. High school had. Oh, that I like. Yeah, keep the little floor uh, car, car maintenance Maybe thing under. A little squeegee thing on a little handy handle. would be yeah. perfect. Yeah, that'd be handy. Just to get that extra splash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's what? And before you. Uh, before you drain no, it, no, that's you want to make sure it's turned off. Because you can never yes. have any back water. Yeah. Yeah. It prevents back water. Zero to ten, all so the way down to the left is zero. So something and there was an L in there. Um, this can be removed. It can get clogged and you can have, the, you can have back water. So nowadays you never... Okay, somebody get it started for me. So whatever is left in there. important that the hood filters remain clean. What do you guys have a schedule for that usually here? We haven't had one like this, so uh, the fan went straight out. Which is the type 2 hood. So, what do you suggest um, on cleaning them? I would say for this, there's no, I mean, there's no deep fryer or anything like that, just putting straight grease up in there. Um, I can only think of, right, right, 
So, I can't imagine um, the school lunch anymore. I'm not going to find butter or fat anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say bi weekly, taking them out. Um, soap and water, you can run them through a dish rack in the. Uh, yeah, or bi or every other week, twice a month. Probably, they recommend that. I think we'll do once a month. So I, let's I, try I to do it. Know how much fine. we are. Yeah, once a month. So let's try to do it. Okay. It's got the little pad here, the hooks yeah. here. And it's meant to fit in between a couple of these. And you hope you don't drop them back behind the right You hope you don't drop them. <laughs> they are heavy. So it's just touching up against in there. Oh, have some weight. Put some weight to it, doesn't it? It does have some weight when you start doing that. I don't like So wiping those down. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more weight. Because those capture most of the grease before it goes up into the back. That's the point. And it's point very warm. Okay, so wait a minute. This is really kind of a two person because if I took this out yeah. to run it through. Oh, uh -huh. Which will have to be done before yeah. we even put them back up. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. Next. You want to try and put it back up in? <laughs> I think that's as good as hook. You have to turn it around, I think, and hook it with that hook. So add on it. And go all the way up into it. So that's what it did. Hook. It didn't slide up. There's our three minutes. Yeah, somebody's, I'm not going to be able to get it. Stop the timer. Just hit stop. You don't have to hear the alarm anymore. So right now it's not creating any more steam. Um, <laughs> if you switch it to manual, oh. it will. Or if you start another, so clear the time. Okay. If you want to do another two minutes. Excuse me. Start. Yeah. It'll steam for two more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is not this is not something I can see. Yeah. Too many of us do. Yeah, I can't reach it up there. Yeah, with that thing so, standing there. So um Helen will have to put a work order in? Yeah, put a work order in. This tool on top of the ovens. A lot of times it's kept in here. There's a little weapon here. Well, this is something we're going to have to wipe out. It does have a lip there. Yeah, to clean the hood? Yeah. When they clean the hood with the steam thingy that they're going to go through and go shh. Exactly. Maintenance. Um, should we move on to convection ovens? We have two double stack convection ovens. This one is existing. Um, but it's linked up with the new models. Essentially, the same thing. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Gas shut off right now, we're on. Okay. Um, that's no, the we gas touch that. Off to it. Yeah. Oven's off. Cook mode, cool down mode. Okay. Turn to cook mode. Our oven's on. Here's your light. Okay. And your fan, low and high. So right now, we'll set to 400 degrees for five minutes. Let that do its thing. It's going to count down. Timer's done. Okay, the timer's done. So, clear. Good. I lost my glasses. Anybody see them? Oh, they're here, Pat. So as you can see here, the oven's on. We have the timer going. It's uh, heating to 400 degrees. Once it hits 400 degrees, that heating light will turn off. It'll be preheated. You can see now it's, it's heating up inside. Are uh, the fans? What's the, the timer oven? for? How long it's going to take the oven to heat up? 
No, this was just the timer, just to. Okay, so we can leave it there until it spins in. Then we set our timer for our. So you can set the heat first. Um, okay. Okay, do you feel good about that steamer? Okay, I I cleared that, so the buzz is not buzzing. It's ready to come on out. I'm done with it. I put the day off, and then we're ready to do the same. I don't have to put anything else. Okay. End of the day. That will be a when you open the door, the pan stops. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll let this one heat up, um, and then I'll, I'll show you the, the cool, proper cool down instructions. Um, with a lot of heat going into a cavity, just simply turning it off and letting it sit in there is terrible for the control panel. Um, cold metal, when it heats up, it expands and contracts. So for the life of the oven, they recommend a certain cool down procedure. That you do what? Uh, cool the ovens down to the end of the night. Oh, okay. end of the day. Rather than what? Keep them leave them on. Turn them off and leave the door closed. Yeah, so, so you're telling me open the door to load. So, um, are these for kids? Let's pretend. So this one's hot. We used it. So do this. So there's a cool down feature. Uh huh. Yeah, crack the door. And it pipes the hot air out. Yeah. And then you know, do that for the last, say, 15, 20 minutes of the day. And then oven off. Okay. Or you can even leave them open if they're still a little bit heating there. It's not going to hurt anything having these doors open. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, one question here. Where do we turn our fan on in the morning? Do we turn this on? Okay, let me handle it. Okay, so um, the Gaylord hood has four temperature sensors. The system set up on an auto start. When the sensors here are 10 to 12 degrees above a little temperature sensor in the control panel, the fan will turn on. It's a variable speed fan, so as the temperature gets hotter, we pull more air out. As it cools down, it's, the fan speed slows down. Okay, so it's an auto start feature. So. If you come in on Saturdays for a special event, okay, the hood will automatically start as you start heating up the equipment. So the only thing we do is listen for it, and we know so we know there's a problem if we don't hear it. Is it, is it going to roar? No, it's on no, right it's now. On yeah. So it, uh, it has a, another little button right here that <coughs> it says push push for 100% fan. That'll give you five minutes of fan at 100% speed. So it's, it's pulling, um, I think it's about 5,000 CFM of air. It's a lot of air. Why would we do that? What, what would if you cause us to do if that? You, if you come in and for some reason you feel like you want to purge the air, maybe, if the fan, maybe you have the steamer on and, and only one piece of equipment, it may not be enough temperature. Oh. So you might just come over, hit it, and, and maybe in a few minutes, the temperature sensors will turn on. Okay. Okay, turn on. The only way to tell if the fan's really on is this little red light right in there. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, can you push the button here before you start it, I guess, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's it. So, when the okay. So, can it can it punch the button um, just before he started? So, anyway, so it runs for 5 minutes at 100% speed and then 20 minutes at, at half speed. Okay. Okay, so you have about 25 minutes of runtime when you push the button. Okay. The other other item that I wanted to note is that we have the red and red system. And so if you in the it will turn off the gas to all the equipment. Mm -hmm. It turns off the power to the equipment here. Okay. It starts the hood at 100% speed. It turns off the heating makeup air fan system. Mm -hmm. And so you're in the fire mode to vent mm -hmm. the, the, any smoke. And that will set the alarm off too? That sets the alarm That'll off. That'll set the alarm yeah. off. In the whole building? Yeah. Okay. And so then the gas comes out of uh, all of these little silver cones, guys. Uh -huh. That's that's the cancel gas. The retardant type. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention at this point, well, there's two things. One, you guys have air conditioning. Yay. Oh, 
Okay. All right. That's a heaven. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the dishwasher also has a um, exhaust fan, and it's automatically set up. And you turn the dishwasher on, and you run a, um, a tray through. It has a contactor in the controller, which then turns the exhaust fan on. And that's 100% fan speed. We just got it running this morning. <coughs> Once the dishwasher is turned off, the, system will, the fan will run for another 20 minutes and then shut down. Oh, okay. We so don't have the timer quite working right at the moment, but the exhaust fan is running. Okay. Um, the other item is, is when the um, Fan systems are on, we have the makeup air unit, so you get heating and cooling. Your heating set point is 70 degrees, your cooling set point is 76, so it might be a little warm for you. Let me know. We have ways to kind of adjust a few things as we go. Um, we're trying to maintain a slightly negative pressure in the kitchen area from the commons. So we have a little sensor that is measuring pressure in the commons and pressure in this area here. So we're trying to keep any of the uh, odors from going into the commons. Okay, so it's slightly negative pressure. You mm -hmm. won't notice it at all. Okay, uh, the fire alarm, is that the only one here in the kitchen or? That is, well, that's the pull station. So we have fire heads. So first off. Uh, but if I had to pull one, that is the one I go to? That's the only one. The only one, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Um, oh, lighting wise, we have, you see this white, uh, yes. unit. Yeah. that's an occupancy sensor. So basically your whole area has occupancy oh. sensors. Oh. Uh, I don't know if we don't want this scent of the cooking to go out. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's yeah. how you entice your customers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you want it reverse. You want to kind of yeah. blow a little yeah. air out there. Yeah. Yeah. Right out there. you're doing cookies or you're doing fresh bread, bread. you oh. want it to go yes. through that. Yeah, yeah. That scintillator on full. Yeah, <laughs> scintillator, yeah. scintillator yeah. that way. Okay, well, that's out of my control, so uh, maybe you can put a little fan or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, okay. anyway, um, we'll be here for the first month of September and then off and on until we get all of the HVAC uh, systems running. Okay, so you're basically the HVAC kind of um, heating. I'm called the commissioning agent. Okay. I'm hired directly by the school district to oversee the contractors. Okay. Okay. Well, I think there's somebody we go to before you, and they'll go to you. So. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of go between, but you know, I work with Scott Wood now. Yeah. So we'll go to. We usually go to Scott or whoever <laughs> okay. the yeah. you know Mary will di direct us. So. So okay. the only thing I need to know from you guys is what time do you get here in the morning, and what time do you leave? Um, we're we're going to set the schedule for the. Uh, we're HVAC. looking at six o'clock right now and gone by uh, two. Oh, six to two. Yeah, that's until, general ballpark. Until we get okay. our, so I haven't seen the schedule, so I've. No okay, idea. I'll, I'll set the schedule from six to four for start, and you okay. guys can let me know. Okay? Perfect. Because I figure you're probably the first. You can, I don't know if you're hanging around. Okay. Well, we may yeah, be using the space at, for this. Would you set it at five thirty? Yeah. Uh, the fan system will automatically start to either heat or cool the space in the morning um, before six o'clock. Mm -hmm. It has an optimal start feature, mm -hmm. um, and once we get that working, the fan can start three hours before the scheduled occupancy. It's just you know we start at our job at six, but we're here. We're, we're here before. But see, so what we you're can... talking about is the building's never going to get that cold or that hot because prior to. You know, like let's say it's the sub-zero kind of weather. It's already kicking on, yes. yeah. so that it it'll stays. it'll so kick on three hours before the skip start. So yeah. if you want 5:30, um, the fan system should the temperature should be comfortable for you. I don't think they'll ever. Yeah, oh, six okay. o'clock is going to be the earliest anybody can get in for a while. Okay, so we'll set it for 6 a.m. and then if there's a problem, we can get it adjusted yeah. in uh, September, October. I'm. Yeah. My, my contract's through the first year of occupancy, so I'll be popping in every other month once we get everything ready. Okay. Yeah. And then Scott Wood or uh, Architect, uh, Todd Construction, they all have my okay. information. Mike, you got it. Email me. Okay. I can they give you my card too. So. Yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, so oh, I, I am also. Steve. Hi, senior. Yeah, and uh, what's your name? Mike. Mike, okay. So I am here at 6. Okay, well I'll leave you my card. Okay. 
I'll go get it now. Versus Palo Alto, it's just a district page back guy. You sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's really it. And then if you have any questions, as the time goes, um, Mike can call me and I'll stop in. Okay? Are you programming <laughs> really important, you guys, we don't put anything in this space because the exhaust from this, will, it'll, you ruin your ice machine if you back the heat up into it. So this is, no matter what we want to use it for, we don't get, yeah. Unless it's low, we can yeah. get a low part in there. I don't know yet. Let's wait. It's blowing it down as long as it doesn't bounce it back up, but that ventilation on ice machines is is crucial to their health. I've spoken of someone who's burned up an ice machine. Yeah. Oh, can you smell that? Um, yeah. Heat on a on dust. That new, you know, like when you fire up your furnace the first time. So on this, um, it comes with two different, I guess, in two different uh, control panels. The screws here, oh, uh, it's just two screws to open up this thing. So I opened it up. Right now, the one that comes with it is so that you cannot access the controls. So mm -hmm. say if there's people in here, you don't want their fingers okay. on it. The can put this on, it's just two screws, um, where you have a full access of the panel. Okay. Probably. Well, I, I, unfortunately, in, in schools, a lot of people, excuse me, have access to, to buildings that we don't want. So we will want the guard at this point, the controls off of or people's reach, because yeah, we'll hang on to that one. But um, we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to mess with it. We, we don't want teachers or oh, yeah. people. Mm -hmm. It's making its first batch of ice here. Um, the plumber didn't fire it up after it up, but so I got this one. On. So we don't have any ice drops yet, but I was going to run it through to okay. get out the initial yeah. manufacturing yeah, some. and then run a cleaning cycle. Okay, and so what means, if anything, do we have to do? The filter? Is there a filter on this that we have to clean? There's a water filter. Oh, okay. um, the internal guts of the machine. Uh, I mean, it's obviously, you you know you want to keep these areas clear. What do we got going on now? Is that the steamer still? Yeah, that's the oven. Oh, the oven. If you leave it cracked like this, it'll just go up into the lid. Um, I'd say run it for at least 10 minutes until it's visibly cooled down. Until we get tired of this one. And then after that, we go. Cool down. You drop an ice in. Okay. It's, it runs, the water kind of runs over that plate. It's kind of. The warm water over the evaporator? And that's what releases it. Um, so again, this is just something that you want to keep keep track of. Make sure it's not getting dusty. You don't have anything around here, so there's nothing that should be getting in there. So, um, this will be the access for a service that have if they need to do two from out. Okay. So, so when the filters are changed, that would be a good time to look in there and maybe exactly make sure. Yeah, make sure you're not getting any excessive dust. The one at the high school, we change the filter twice a year on that. Is that probably? Six months is yeah, yeah. what they recommend. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wrote down yeah, that order filter. Um, but I can probably guarantee that Al doesn't take all that care. No, probably not. I think that's going to be on his list when he has And yeah. 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 So again, this is two screws to access this. Um, we're going to leave on this untouchable panel. So once we get it, I'll, I'll shut it back up once we get it programmed the way you want it, just to make ice. And uh, we're going to run a cleaning cycle too after it drops. So we should probably come back to this one after it's all set up, we'll have to touch it. Yep, it'll, it'll make ice until the bin is full. Um, and just like the one at home, it has a stopper to it. Once that gets below there, it'll run another cycle to keep making ice. How often will we have to clean that? Cleaning uh, of the bin is kind of the most thing. And all you do is you shut down, um, shut down the machine for making ice, scoop it all out, wipe it all down, you know, use a sanitizer in there. Uh, and then the cleaning cycle of the machine, I would recommend once a month. The what once a month? The cleaning cycle inside the machine. Oh, okay. Do we do and that or is that maintenance? I think, I think maintenance. 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 Okay. okay. So in the O and M manual has all that information for them, okay. uh, step by step. This control panel, it's it's really user friendly. Um, it tells you everything about the machine, everything down to service information, real time data, manual harvest. Um, Go up. Machine info. It gives you your 90%, 70% capacity, which is 100 or 410 pounds of ice. It'll give you your model number, the IY 504. Serial number, warranty information, install date, manufacture date, almost too much information. Yeah, but it's, it's just kind of it's all built into the machine. Is that where the cleaning cycle is too? Yep. Cleaning cycle is right here, and I don't want to turn it on while yeah. it's still making its ice. Okay. So really all someone has to do is just push the button once a month and it'll do its thing. Oh, this is the out. 
against the little activation lever here. It'll activate and drag that hitch rack through uh, 175 degree wash cycle. There's a high temperature so no chemical required. No chemical stuff? High temperature. So it's sanitized so there's a high temperature. Much better on your uh, supply. The chemicals will be away from you. So, um, trim the jet dry, anything like that? Nothing? It doesn't dry. That was the stuff that you're trying. So, what's the final risk to be above 170 degrees? Right now it's 180. It's just that off because that piece is out of the way of it. Once it gets around right here, it's going to kick it to the edge. It's right there. Then you roll it here. Throw your clean dishes on the drying rack. Oh, okay. That's okay. Sure. So, each time, they don't just put the rack there, they have to hit the start. Uh, well, yeah, once, once the machine, the machine's going, the machine's going right now. So I hit start, put the rack in there. And then it's going. So if they can put rack after rack, it's not that they have to hit start every time they put a rack. Okay. But it does not shut itself down once it's operating. So if they're going to walk away to grab something, you hit the stop button? Yeah, you have to hit the stop button. Hit the stop button. Well, there it stops. Yes, kind of loud. It'll stop by itself then. Yeah, that's a way to do it. Um, wasn't supposed to do that? Well, I don't know if, if we're going to run any more on it, but the, the tank does fill in the, in the morning. Um, and once the tank fills, the booster heater heats that water for that final rinse up to 170 plus degrees. Uh, so right now for one two, and this is something you do at the end of the day, uh, right now the drain is up so it's closed. You can drop it down and that'll drain out um, the water that it's been recycling through. Should it be off first? Yes. It should be off first. Can these elements, uh, are they, can they, will they, once you drain, are the elements going to be dry and then risk for or they kind of just protect it. Great. So um, when you start it up in the morning, it will, you want to put the drains closed again. It'll fill itself up and then it'll start heating. The same thing. So if you forget to turn it off, say somebody kicks it or somebody just, they just drain it, will it help the elements overheat and possibly? It has, it, a, it has a shut off, internal shut off. So it doesn't self destruct itself. Okay, so once again, I was changing that. We close the drain fields like they are now, kick, lift them up, and we wait, give the water. Can I hit on right then at the same moment? Yeah, you power it on because then it'll fill. I need to power it on because that will fill it. Okay. And you said, what did you say about soap? Uh, this, this is a high temperature machine that doesn't require okay. um, aid sanitizer. And it has no sanitizer, it's only hot water. No jet dry. Right. How hard are those to flip back and forth? Well, I haven't done it, but I don't think they're very hard. Uh, they're the rice. No. Um. Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's been stopped for a minute. It's still operating, right? It's uh, off. Awesome. Um, you turned it off? It's, it's stopped. Okay, 
So, did it stop on its own or you stopped? That's all. Okay. So,
Then it's drained for the night. Drain for the leave, night. It, leave it drained or close it up. So then all you got to do is hit on in the morning and it'll fill by itself. And we'll put these back. Yeah. We'll put these back to vertical. Yeah, I might put a cheater note right there on the front yeah. of it. <laughs> has it all right there. Are we going back over there? Locate these keys somewhere for a certain person. But. So here's the walk in. Light switch. Anybody want to go inside? I don't mind that in there. I like it. Voice off a lot of So that's where I write down my temp. So it's 39 to 
of 40 right now. But you don't write it off of this. I don't write it off. You of write it off of the, the actual one. cheapy uh, weird thing. Is that for HACCP or yeah. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, the health department yeah. won't accept that because it's mechanical and can be broken. The thermometer with the stem. Okay. Yeah, I know. They want us and to believe that. And this is room control. That's. This is for the walking. Okay. And this one is wow. this here. I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. Yeah, so basically, kind of, like you're watching out. that to, and, and babysitting that, but right. but yeah, Mike and Mike and uh, that Al, okay. yes, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that keep trying. Okay, wow. all righty. Let's keep moving. Oh, there's a I'm not sure what that is. I don't think that's oh, the board. Yes. Sitting on a on, on a uh, paper plate, say. Uh, oh, no, it's well, got lamps above too, right? Correct. So I don't know to keep so your like pizza warm. One hundred and fifty or one hundred and sixty is what we do. Hold, yeah, holding temperature. So about the same. Exactly. Okay. And it just heats from the bottom. Um, okay. And then this on one. Here. What do I do? This here. one. I'm sorry, you'll probably have to go over that again. I think. Um, so this is that's the pizza warming uh -huh. under here. Here's the controls. And that's on off, so what do I... So this is this is going to be from the, the, the top corner. Oh, the life's... The cow rod. Okay. And it's just a low to high, depending on 
um, how close the food is to it and how hot you want it to get. Oh, okay. Kind of something you'll have to play with and figure out where you want it to be. So I just set this at 150. Uh -huh. So let's say you had a pizza on here. You want to keep warm, it's already warming up. Mm -hmm. And that's um, the off on switch there? Yep, off and on, and then set your temperature here. Okay. Uh, these food warmers, um, do you want to put water in them? Before oh, you put your steam, pans in. Steam table. Steam table. I, I don't, what am I going to use this for? Um, they click on. We'll figure it out. Maybe you'll see. We, we obviously. Pizza up there. They're cool. they're auto fill here, so we put in five. It's gonna it's gonna fill with the whatever water. Oh wow! Look at that. And then when you okay, turn it off, like it. The high school. Okay, and it'll help filter through to the others, right? Correct. Um. Is there a plug that has to be on? Well, each one. Has its own. So um, it fills to a certain level to where uh -huh. I'm sorry. it heats the pan through the water, not directly through the metal. Yes. And when you turn it off, the water should drain it should out. Drain. Why are we draining now? It's That's your light switch for the lights. Oh. I'm sorry, we're going to leave that on. That's cool. So, we don't know why it's green. Is it a heating lamp, too, if you turn it on more? Oh, well, so the heating lamp is a separate control. Oh, it's right here. So, when it's real hot, we can just do the lights. So, it'll fill that. It's going to take a while to fill it. Yeah. Well, especially if it's leaking. <laughs> is there? Does it shut off at a certain, certain amount? Yep. It's not like they're going to overfill it if they forget to right. <laughs> stop it. There's no control of the water fill. It's just you turn on the heat oh. and it, it fills it. Hmm. This one's not on. It isn't. Oh, okay. And this is a water one, too? I don't see. Those, those ones are not. These are cold. These are the cold? And okay. you put For your like ice, ice in ice here? You put ice in it. It's just it's an insulated box. Okay. It does have a drain too for when you want the ice to melt out of it. Where's the drain? Down here? Yeah. Right. It's plumbed in through the right I'm not side. seeing it. Huh? I could probably go to that too. Do they all oh, probably. this one? Oh, I bet. Yeah. It would just automatically. You don't need here, it. Here, is this one for where oh. was that? Okay. So this is for the heat controls. You can get that. Okay. Yep. Okay. No glass. chlorine in these wells, no chlorine bleach. So we don't use it anyway, but um, that means no comedy stuff or any of those kind of cleaners. Our drain is left open. Can you explain those front windows? Uh, the C-scarts? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I'll go around the other side. Is that the best you do for them? Oh, yeah. So That's the four of us. adjustable on either side here. Up, down. There we go. And, and it works as a whole unit? All correct. three of them? So the, uh, the vertical up, down is on these two ballasts here. And then to adjust the turn of them, see if I can get these on that.